like you to give a huge, massive monkey show welcome for our final act tonight, Mr. George Waitman. <laughs> Something you might not know. This is not my real voice. <laughs> Something you might also not know. This hurts. <laughs> I do want to talk to you about voice though, because uh, something rather embarrassing happened to me. Also quite embarrassing that it wasn't the first time. Because I was in conversation, a girl I quite liked, and mid-sentence I just went, oh yeah, what a lovely idea. <laughs> Now, who are the brave men among us that can admit that's happened to them? Yeah. One. <laughs> There's one man there said yesterday when the other's like, oh, go on then. Because <laughs> everyone's had it. Haven't you? Anyway, uh, but, but yeah, it's, it's, it's something that really bothered me because I'm fairly sure at some point in my life, my voice is already broken. <laughs> Fingers crossed, otherwise something's going downhill. And I'm worried that, is it going to repeat? Like, as I get older, like, as I get older and older, this is going to happen more often. So I'm going to be there in my sort of, in my later years, my children's friends come round and just like, what's wrong with your dad? Don't ask, mate, don't ask. No, it's fine, he likes me. Hey, Mr. Wayman, what's the matter? What do you think? I'm 63 years old. I've got three kids. And I work as a barrister. And now I sound like I'm going to be singing the solo to once in Royal David City. <laughs> You know what's funny about that for me? I did that, and turning the whole thing on his head, my voice spoke during the solo. <laughs> I was a quiet boy. I know it's hard to believe this uh, testosterone-fueled furry-faced monster in front of you was once done up in a cassock and a little rough, but it's true. And not only, not only, I put it on myself. I wasn't forced into the cassock and the rough, but by untrained priests. Um, <laughs> categorically deny anything to do with religion and being abused by it. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> um, yeah, because I was not just, <laughs> like Mark Spencer, I was not just a choir boy. <laughs> I was head choir boy, motherfucker, head chorister, big red ribbon, so when it came to Christmas Eve I was there. Once in I grew up, my balls grew down. <laughs> but I still look like a member of the famous five. <laughs> without this, without this, it is a short push for me to just be going, come on, let's, let's get the picnic basket with a ginger beer and head down to the Bluebell Wood. <laughs> I was even in the damn famous five until they cut me out for inappropriate behavior and replaced me with a fucking dog. <laughs> So, so I did grow the beard uh, out of free will, and uh, but it still doesn't help because I have this this voice, as you can probably hear. Otherwise, thank you for laughing. But um, <laughs> one person back is like, "What does he mean?" Ah, it's a joke. Um, but well, I'll just hold on a second whilst I think of what I was going to say. Um, I can't pull off serious and adult in this voice because it doesn't have the same impact when you're sort of at Victoria Station, there's a massive queue of people, and you're backing up behind someone saying, look old boy, I really have to, you know, get to the, uh, get to the trainer, but you couldn't possibly just shimmy out the way, because, you know, I possibly really need to get to, it doesn't have the same impact or balls as, fuck off, get out of the way, you trap! <laughs> Very bad news to say that to a security guard. <laughs> can pull off this sort of, you know, sort of sleazy accent, but get away with it. It's Leslie Phillips. Anyone know who he is? He's, um, he was in the Carry On films, and he's the guy who's like, ding dong. And uh, he's sort of one of my idols. Uh, but he's kind of gone downhill from Carry On and out of Africa. Now he is the sorting hat in Harry Potter. <laughs> and from there, it was just a short slide to, I am more than just a cat. I am an I am his cat. <laughs> that role model. But I'm back at Victoria Station and I've, I've figured out how to get people to move out of the way. And I call it the emergency Scott. <laughs> because no matter how big 
intelligent or brave people are. A surprise attack by a Scotsman, it's fucking terrifying. <laughs> Do you make it out of the way, please, pal? I've got a really urgent train to catch. So I said she said that to the ticket barrier guy, because I'm like, I'm not getting a fucking t well, I did. I wasn't saying this in my head, I'm not Scottish in my head. But um, I'm not getting a fucking ticket, I need to get on this train. And the only way I could do it was jump the barrier. It's like, I don't need to get on that train, man. My mother's dying. <laughs> There's other things going on. Why are you letting me through? Oh, I'm not sorry, man. I can't. It's, 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 it's regular. I'll get a ticket on the train, man. You're going to be responsible for someone's life. <laughs> oh, I go through. <laughs> Ran down the platform, jumped onto the train. There was a woman there with a ticket machine. I said, excuse me, my darling, can I have a ticket? He said, you yeah, no problem, my darling. And where are you going to? I'm going to Canterbury, my dear. And she said, oh, where are you from? What? <laughs> you were caught me a second ago. <laughs> and I'm quickly running through place names in my head. The Edinburgh and Glasgow are fucked off. Aberystwyth is in Wales. <laughs> My basket was a little sachet and said, pour this in his first water, uh, milk bottle. And it was powdered Scottish accent. <laughs> and I've been speaking like this ever since. And it's thrilling because it does work a lot of the time. You are going around the place and people move out of the way. It's just like, oh, all right, mate, all right. Thank you very much, pal. Sometimes, though, it can get you into a little bit of trouble. I was in uh, Kingston upon Thames, uh, which is fourth most likely place you're going to get assaulted in London. Um, apparently, if they're third, they get a grant from the government, so watch out because the council members are leaping out with clipboards and assaulting people to make up the numbers. But I was there with my best mate, and um, we just went in the bus stop. I'm a bit pissed, and I'm in the Scottish mode, but it's kind of taken over, so I'm not really. The English reserve is kind of fucked off by the beginning of the night. And, um, and, uh, and, and a, uh, a gorilla comes towards us. Um, something going, really? In Kingston? Surely not that far south. But um, no, it's, it's this great big fucking Neanderthal child. Oh, all right, man. All right, all right, all right. Turns my mate, little guy, long hair, says, all right, mate, it's me. Oh, I'm wearing my spooks jacket as well, a big black thing, so I feel even more powerful. Scottish and uh, abusing of uh, government powers. Um, but it's all right, all right, mate. Is that a boy or a girl? <laughs> <laughs> now, my English persona, I would very much have been like, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Certainly not ding dong for that one. <laughs> However, to my shame, Spook's jacket, Scottish voice, turned round and in full voice said to him, He's a boy, you cunt! hearing from him again. And then my friend uttered the immortal words, George, he's coming back. <laughs> now, I, I, was, I, was, I was, oh fucking hell, what am I going to do? Praying to David Attenborough saying, do you run from a gorilla or do you stand your ground? Because <laughs> if I get it wrong, I'm fucked. <laughs> so I was like, okay, the only thing I can do, stay in character. <laughs> but I mean, you insult my friend and just say, oh, I did what? I did fucking what? Oh, I saw your friend, I'm going to fucking smash your face in the fucking wall. All right, mate, you're spitting on me now. It's not the most pleasant thing in the world, but we'll just go with it. And then David Attenborough, the spirit of him, was watching over me, and I was standing my ground, and that was the right answer, because the guy lumbered off after a while. <laughs> Thank fuck for that. Oh, Christ, that was that. That was that. Thank God for that. And the guy comes up out of the, uh, of the mist. <laughs> And, uh, and he says, he says, I think he might have been, well, I'm not an expert, but what's coming will might give you a clue why I thought he might have been gay. Um, hello? <laughs> Did you ask me if you could use me in your set? I think not. But um, no, he comes up to me and he says, you know, it's so nice to see people standing up to them at last. It wasn't Leslie Phillips, I will tell you that for free. But, um, uh, and I thought, what a lovely thing to say. Well, that's just what a lovely thing to see. Um, but what I, that would have been what I thought if I hadn't actually been thinking, could you please get the palm of your hand off my ass and your finger out of my backside? <laughs> Thank you very much. I've enjoyed my view. You've been absolutely lovely.